All right, this video is on order of operations. The first thing that we need to do is to remind ourselves of the order in which we conduct mathematical operations. The operations of multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and exponents being a part of that, and also parentheses, or also sometimes called grouping symbols. So most people refer to order of operations as doing parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, addition, and subtraction. Now I've done these in different colors so that we see the order of operations. Parentheses come first, exponents come next. Some people will either put exponents in with parentheses or they'll put them in with multiplication, by the way. And then multiplication, you see, are done in the same color. Well, that's because multiplication and division come together. You do them in left to right order. So if division comes before multiplication as you read from left to right, then you're going to do division before multiplication. So it's not a hard and fast rule that you multiply and then you divide. You've got to be careful of that. You'll also notice that I put addition and subtraction in the same color. That's because addition and subtraction also are done at the same exact time, and we do them in left to right order. So back to parentheses again. Parentheses are also called grouping symbols, and I've written a bunch of grouping symbols here. These first are truly what we know as parentheses. The next ones are brackets, and finally, these are called braces. These are absolute value symbols, and this is a radical symbol. So those are our grouping symbols. Some people will refer to this as PEMDAS. Others will refer to it as GEMDAS, the G being then for grouping symbols instead of parentheses. So a lot of people remember this order of operations by saying PEMDAS. PEMDAS being parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. There's also a little saying that goes along with this to help you remember it, and that's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And one of the things you notice about that little saying is my dear it are both adjectives that describe a person, Aunt Sally, which kind of naturally in English would group those together as well. All right, let's do some reminders before we get into actual simplification using order of operations. I want to go over some different ways to write multiplication first. The good old-fashioned way we can write multiplication is with the x, 3 times 4. Um, sometimes you'll see in my old notes and maybe other places every once in a while an asterisk 3 times 4. The newer way of writing it will be with a dot 3 times 4. And then we can put parentheses around one or both of the numbers to indicate multiplication as well. So all of these represent the 3 times 4. Now remember also that when we hear the word product that means the answer to a multiplication problem, and the word factor refers to a part of a multiplication problem. So in 3 times 4, 3 and 4 are factors, and 12 is the product. All right, now let's talk about division. In division, this problem says 12 divided by 4 equals 3. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. There are three different ways that we commonly see division written. And in all three of these, 12 is called a dividend, 4 is called a divisor, and 3 is the quotient. Quotient being the answer to a division problem. The divisor is how many pieces we're breaking a whole group of things into, and the dividend is the, num the things that we're breaking into groups or pieces. All right, distributive property. Remember the distributive property is multiplication distributing over addition. So A gets multiplied by B, and then added to that A multiplied by C. And this distributive property is something that doesn't occur 
in order of operations. So I'm going to write PEMDAS right here. And I'm going to write a great big circle with a line through it. We don't do the derivative, uh, distributive property in PEMDAS because we have grouping symbols that will happen first and then we would multiply. So distributive property has no place in order of operations. Division and zero. We need to talk about this. We have zero divided by anything in this first grouping here. And then in our second grouping, we have anything divided by zero. So what you notice is when I divide zero by anything, I'm always getting zero. So I'm taking zero, right? Nothing, I have nothing and I'm trying to divide it up. Well, I won't get any groupings if I don't have anything to group, um, to divide up, right? So that is division of zero by anything. That gives you zero. Now, on the other hand, when we try to divide by zero, zero is not a counting number, a number that we use to count with. We count one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth things, but it is not a number that we count. We don't count zero. So when I would try to break things up into zero, I can't count zero, so that means there's no way to break things up into groups of zero. That is why we write that division by zero is undefined. So if the zero is in the denominator of a fraction, or if it's on the outside of the division symbol, or if it's the last number in the old-fashioned way of writing division, we're going to answer undefined because there is no definition for that. All right, finally, let's go ahead and get started on some order of operation problems. So we'll write out PEMDAS to remind ourselves what we're going to do. And we want to go ahead and we want to check off that we do each of the steps properly. So the first thing I look for is parentheses. Well, there are parentheses here, but there's nothing inside of it. It's just holding a number, which means it is showing me multiplication. Exponents? No, no exponents. Multiplication? Ah, yes. So I'm going to multiply first. 4 times 2 is 8. And there's no division. Remember, division and multiplication and addition and subtraction come at the same time. So now what I have is the problem 3 plus 8. And once I have that, then I add 3 plus 8, which equals 11. And so there we go. All right, see if you can figure out where we'll start in this one. Okay, so let's take a look. So parentheses, well there are parentheses, but there's nothing inside the parentheses except a number, so that means that's telling me about multiplication. Exponents, no, no exponents. Multiplication, division, well multiplication, yes, division, yes, but we have to look at them as we go this way, from left to right. And the first thing that I encounter is actually a division problem, so that's what I'm gonna do first. So 15 divided by three, that gives me 5, and then I will multiply that by 2. And so my answer is 10, which if you notice, this is totally different than if you tried to multiply first and then do the division. So it's really important that you do order of operations correctly. All right, so first we look for parentheses. Well, I see some parentheses here, but inside is just a number, so they're not really parentheses. They're telling me about multiplication. Exponents? Nope, no exponents. Multiply, divide. Well, I have multiplication and division. Remember, I'm going to go left to right order, so multiplying comes first. So I have 3 times 12, which is 36. And then 36 divided by 2 comes next. And 2 will go into 36 if you need to. You write it right out here like that, right? 2 goes into 3 one time with one left over, and 2 will go into 16 eight times. So that's 18 if you didn't know that. And then we're going to subtract 1. So now we have 18 minus 1, which is 17. And so there's our answer on that one. Next, we have parentheses here. 
So that's where we start. Inside those parentheses, there is more than just a number, and that's why I know that the parentheses are where I'm going to start. So I'll write this 5 out here, and then I'll simplify what's in the parentheses. 3 times 7, uh, plus 7 is 10, and so now I have 5 times 10, because these parentheses now are just standing for my multiplication, and 5 times 10 is 50. Remember that when you multiply by factors of 10, you just add zeros to the number. Okay, now here we go with a little bit more complicated one. So the first thing I see here is parentheses. So I'm going to start there. So that gives me 5, and then that 5 is going to get squared, and then minus, and then I did parentheses, and then exponents, multiply, divide comes next. So I'll do the division here. And so um, the 5 times 5, we want to multiply that out, right? 5 times 5, and then we want to divide here, which gives me another 5. So what I have is 5 times 5, which is 25, minus 5, and then I get 25 minus 5, which is 20, and that's my final answer. Okay, now here we go again. The radical is a grouping symbol, a parenthesis, so I'm going to start inside here and simplify that. So that's going to give me the square root of 3 plus 6, which is 9, and then minus, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this one here, 5 divided by 5, because multiplication and division come before subtraction. I'll simplify the square root of 9. Remember, the square root of 9 means what, when I raise it to the second power, gives me 9. Well, that would be 3 squared that gives me 9. So remember that that means my answer is 3. So this says 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. And that's my final answer. And then the next one, the first thing I'm going to look for is parentheses. I have parentheses here, but that is not a true parenthesis. I'm simply going to look at this as multiplication. So I have division, because remember a fraction is division, and multiplication. So I'll do this one and then this one. So this is going to look like 24 plus 0 divided by anything is 0 minus 3 times 4, which is 12. Anything plus zero, that's the identity property of addition. Anything plus zero is the number itself, so 24. And then subtract 12, and 24 subtract 12 is 12. And there we go. That's my final answer. So those are my order of operation problems, and that ends order of operation. Now you can keep practicing those skills. Um, and build them up so that you can put all kinds of order of operations together. Remember that when we're doing order of operations, what we're doing is simplifying mathematical expressions, all numbers this time around. We'll actually end up using order of operations to help us with algebra too.